What a sick mail day. I got uh, two packages, just got back from grabbing a delicious sub with my good friend Andy and had a couple things on the porch. Let's check them out. All right, first up, the Kirk, uh, Kirger, Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyzstan, the, um, they do the, they do the videos on YouTube. It's really cool. Um, and they make a calendar to help support the channel. I buy it every year. I really like the channel and I really like these pretty pictures, but it's basically about the human era and check out Kyrgyz, Kyrgyz, check it out. It's good stuff. And then I got this, a Bridge Nine puzzle. Uh, I was actually on the phone with Chris from Bridge Nine yesterday and he goes, I sent you a puzzle and I didn't think it would arrive quite so fast. So consider this my first unboxing. Uh, oh, you know what? Every guy on YouTube has got like, ah, it's got like a knife. And um, I certainly should not have one of these. That's not a knife. But I, we've got a couple like apartments and I was cleaning one out and there was only two things that the tenant left and it was, uh, <laughs> this knife uh, and a Bible. So I, I kept the knife. Ah, and then Chris got me this nice note. It says, Jay, something for the archive. See, this is the type of uh, class and care that you get when you work with such fine establishments like Bridge Nine Records. All right, so let's open this sucker up. There we go. And let's check it out. So what I want to do is I want to find, well, let's just see what band do you think I'm going to, it first. All right, I will grab a few. Let's see what. Uh, let's see what bands we get here. Hmm. Nothing. Wait, is that? Mm, I thought that might be do. Hey! The first band I found that I can actually make out. Check it out. See that? Focus. Defeater. Yeah. I pulled the defeater on my first try. Ooh, and it's empty days and sleepless nights. That might be my favorite record we did. That's like we had, we had like the original lineup. Andy was still playing drums, um, which I think was really important. Like Andy and I riding together, like in the early days was like a, was kind of the thing. So, I mean, that's really how the band started in the first place. But yeah, thanks Chris, that is awesome. I appreciate the gift very, very much. And I'll probably put this together with little man and the wife. This, this is a thing though. Do you guys ever deal with this? This, look. You know how like when um, you get something and you, you take it out of the box, this really shouldn't be very complicated. It just, de it doesn't ever go back in the same. So here, I, you know, I'm like, I'm like spreading them out. I don't know, ah, I'll, I'll fix it later. All right, what's up? I am Jay Moss, and today we are gonna look at something I recorded. The thing, actually the very project that got me into recording, period, uh, that I recorded, I, I mean, 16 years ago. So we're gonna look at my old band, and this is gonna be terrifying, and it's gonna be very exposing, and hopefully not too embarrassing because, but basically what happened was I had a new band and I wanted to do a demo and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I didn't really have a lot of money. So I just decided to take serendipitously timed tax return check to Guitar Center and I had to just kind of get everything, right? Like I had to, I had nothing. I saw headphones and some mics and pretty, the whole deal, right? I had a computer, that's it. And I think I had like, a thousand dollars to spend total and that's what set me on this path that's what set me after that i got super obsessed go figure and here i am talking to a camera about recording today so uh that's what happened the project that we're going to look at is actually uh from about two years after that so i had just a little bit of experience but i mean we're talking i was recording on pretty bad gear um i might have had outboard compression at this point i might have had like I think I had one really good mic pre. I had the Great River MEN 1 NV. And then I think I also had one distressor. So that would be it. Uh, so I'm curious to see what I was doing with compression at the time. If there's mistakes to be made, that's probably where they are. Anyway, the band is called November 5th, 1955. Of course, titled after Back to the Future. It's referencing the date that Doc hit his head and then had the idea for the flux capacitor, thus making time travel possible. And the record is called Bears of the Sea. Uh, it's a Stephen Colbert, very, very deep reference uh, that if anyone out there knows what we're talking about, 
Wow. All right, with that, let's dig into the stems and see if we can just do a speed mix. I'm hoping to go from like, I don't wanna just analyze, I wanna fix, I wanna show you the thought process. I wanna go from like nothing, wait, nothing's down here, from nothing to like complete. All right, diving into this mix. So as you can see, it's like a full LP. Uh, we're not gonna mess with that. So we're just gonna quickly cut away everything. This was like all the stems basically as one thing, but um, I'm just gonna work on one song. It's a pretty crude way to do that. And we're, let's go, let's do this. I'm nervous, but we're just gonna start at the top. We got my drums in orange, got my percussion uh, in gray, bass in yellow. I already can see so many things I need to talk about. Um, our guitars are blue and uh, vocals, which are me, uh, are purple. All right, kick. All right, sounds like a basketball. So the first thing I wanna do, this is what I do with every mix. Like I just listen through. I'm not even gonna like mess with things until I take out the trash. So we're gonna do that really quickly. Uh, okay, I don't know yet on that. Okay, top snare is fine. Uh, bottom snare is okay, it's fine. Th they could be tuned better, a little ringy, but. Hey, Rack Tom, how are you doing? Uh, you know what? I'm down. Good job, 14 years ago, me. And floor Tom sounds good, too. Kind of like some stuff going on when it comes to the bleed, but that is what it is. Those sound terrible. I hope to not use those. The hats sound better in the overheads. They don't sound great. I don't know what my... I want to fix it now, but I won't. Okay. Kind of dark. Ha! Oh, that's not good. Uh, those room mics don't match. So I'm going to pick one. Yikes. I think I'm going to pick the bottom one and darken it. I like the snap it has. That sounds like immediately a little too round. Okay, you're gone. You know what? Mm, other, I'll leave the hats for now. Percussion, fine, we'll do whatever with that. Uh, bass, oh, well, there's only one bass track, so it's not like I can delete anything there anyway. Uh, amps, this is probably where I'll start deleting. Yikes, a lot going on on the top there. And we have dynamics issues. I'm not a two microphone on the cab guy usually, but I kind of think. I think that might be the look here. All right, let's. Oh my God! Right, I used to do that. I just farm that out to plugins these days because it's just less problems with phase. So it looks like I'm gonna keep a lot of this. Terrified to look at the vocals. Martian! Yeah, Martian! <laughs> oh my God! What's up, 25 year old me? Hide with! <laughs> oh, there's so much wrong. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, let's start correcting stuff. I'm just going to, for the sake of time, and the fact that I'm not in love with either of these, um, I'm gonna remove the second out kick. This is basketball-y. We're gonna Pro Q3 this Mamma Jamma here. I don't know who I'm kidding, should just replace this. So <laughs> the first thing we're doing, get rid of the kick. The snare, I think we're gonna be able to work with. Tom's we're gonna be able to work with. I could go down the rabbit hole of um, massaging that kick, but given the nature of this song, like I just need it to be strong, tight and good um, and a properly recorded sound to me, especially in this case, is the way to go over, I don't know, just like trying to turn that into something I love. So. What I'm going to do, I, I like this preset. It's a good starting point. It's the the eight preset on the CLA pack. Um, it, for whatever reason, takes a hot minute to, to load here. But, yeah. Okay, cool. That sounds uh, wrong, better, but still wrong. 
Uh, here we go. We're going to mix, make our range of velocity and dynamics all linked so that I can turn one of these and it turns all of these. Uh, velocity is going to go up. I can tell you already. Dynamics, we're going to cut in half. Cool. The like sort of boominess is a little high for me. I want something a little. Yeah, it's better. What does this sound clicky? That's kind of clicky. There we go. That's my guy. The idea here is I'm going to blend this into the overheads and the room mics a decent amount. So it shouldn't be too like mechanical. I know like on its own, it sounds really mechanical sounding, but there's lots of stuff we can do. Like if we can might low pass that, who knows? Cool. This we're going to work with. Uh, Pro Q3. Let's see. Okay. Where's that harmonic? Right there. Ah, darn it. This one. That's what we need to take out. We're going to notch. Better. Maybe a little too much. Before. Better. We have a ton of hissy stuff that I hate. Uh, soothe to the rescue on this. We're going to go really sharp. We're going to bring this up high. Widen that guy out. Slow our attack big time. What we want is for the snare to not trigger that much bounce here with Sooth 2 and most of it just being notching out the frequencies that live behind it. Mostly. I think that's okay. I actually like that these frequencies are being restored when the snare is being hit because they, uh, they have some mid-range we, we need. Okay, that's how you smooth bleed. With, you know, you're not getting rid of bleed. And then now we're going to do Fab Filter Gate. Um, it's awesome. Just go to the snare long setting here. Cool. And what I like to do is bring the range up so it's not, it doesn't go all the way away. Yeah, like it's just basically lowering the, the floor a little bit, but without completely destroying it. I think it sounds weird in the mix when it's just like psh, psh, every time it hits. Yeah, so what I'm doing with the snare there is, as you can see, I'm not going with any kind of hard gate. I found a harmonic that I just thought was gross. So we notched that out. Then we use some soothe with a really slow attack. The idea there is we're going to make the bleed that is there sound less peaky. It makes just make it sound nicer. And then we use the gate, but we're not going all the way to zero because what can happen in the mix is like you hit the snare and it's just like psh, psh. and then you find yourself oh you want to lean a more drum sample or something because like that will change the ratio of bleed to impact and i'm not saying that we aren't going to use a snare sample i actually don't know yet we might be able to get away with this but once we get all those crunchy guitars and bass in there it might take a little bit of help just to i don't know reinforce it but we'll see so that's what we're doing Okay, so now that we've done that, um, do I have Virtual Mix Rack installed? Like I said, I'm going like super run and gun. So, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like we're just going to find some big coarse movements, coarse sounds. So now that I've got like the bleed just more in check, then I'm just going to go like real, just find a preset. I think I'm going to use Virtual Mix Rack and just get in there, try it out tweak it, move on. This is all about like the beginning of the mix. I've said this a million times, but it's like, you've got the rollers, right? You're painting the room. You're not going to do the brushwork yet. Like maybe do you do the brushwork first? Aren't you supposed to? Well, we're not doing it this time. So this is how we're going to paint our room. We're going to 
friggin' with the rollers, we're gonna get it out everywhere, and then we're gonna go in, we're gonna refine, we're gonna touch up. So it's like big picture items, just like to chunk, to chunk, to chunk, to chunk, down to the fine, fine details at the end. You'll find us like referencing again, things that we worked on in the beginning, um, but it should be a lot easier because we'll have way more objectivity about the whole mix. All right, virtual mix rack as advertised. Let's just pick a preset snare one. Sounds cool. And it does. You know what? That doesn't sound bad, so forget it. Let's just use it. Um, now what are we going to do on snare bottom? So let's look at it. It does have a gross harmonic. It's likely in the same place because it's tuned the same. Well, because it's the same snare, but that's way too aggressive. Let's, nope, we're not doing that. I'm gonna do something weird here. I'm not super loving this. So we're gonna go back to Soothe again. I promise this isn't just a Soothe commercial. Could be. There we go. Just in case those pitches jump around. Now this time we're going to focus on the low mid range and just attenuate as needed. Yeah, hear that pitch bend, like on the bombs, like home. That's why I want to use Soothe, because as the harmonic changes, I want it uh, to change with it. That's keeping it in check better. Now we can probably do something like less insane uh, with Fab Filter. Yep. And you know what? Why don't we do that? We're going to do two rounds of Soothe. We're going to do that snare bleed trick here too. There isn't nearly as much to catch, but why not? Now we're just going to copy over our presetted settings on the bottom snare. And we're going to decide that they're a little aggressive. Um, I think the low boost here might be, yeah, just a little much. I do like this 3.2 boost. We can get away with more of that if we soothe harder. What we're doing is we're lowering the ratio of the annoying cymbal peaks, which means I can boost in that area more because it's just a nicer overall sound. All right, we'll do a little before after on this guy. Cool. I mean, I don't know, like we're not gonna use nearly as much of that as we are the top snare, but cool. Oh my God, I just realized we haven't checked phase yet and there's no way this is perfectly in phase. So these days when I record records, I bake my phase right into my tracking. So I use auto line and uh, I put it on what we call the red faders in Cubase, but it just prints into the file. So that's all done for me. I can't believe I did this cause I'm crazy about making sure things stay in phase. So uh, before we do anything else, we have to make sure we're in phase. So that's on me, that's on me. All right, overhead left, presumably auto align let's get in there all right we're going to send this out to all the other channels on the other channels these will work as thresholds so that's cool now we bring up another iteration of auto line this is going to be not a send but a receiving channel and you can see that one lights up green and this one lights up green when they see each other so Overhead one is gonna to send to the side chain of overhead two, which I believe is overhead right and left. You wanna make sure you're on delay and polarity, detect, and we'll play these things together. Okay, that's a little better. And now uh, we're gonna do this big time for the snare. So we can just alt drag this because it's set up the same way. Let's go to a passage with a lot of snare. It's pretty much everywhere. Ha, sorry about that.
All right, sweet. That sounds way better. All right, here we go. More phase fun. Beautiful. It takes a second for it to find it, but that's okay with us. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have that solo, but um, that sounds way better. You don't have to have the track, like it can be muted and auto line can still run on the insert path. Toms can be a little weird because there's not a lot of, like there's not often a lot of signal. So you just kind of have to like wing it when it comes to amount of signal you feed it. So you find the passage like, boom, here's a bunch of Toms. All right. Make sure we're crossing the thresholds here. And this is all we're gonna detect. All right, boom. But it sounds better. And Tom two, kind of the same deal. All right. Boom. Yep, better. Awesome, whew, man. I'm so embarrassed, I can't believe I didn't do phase right away. Here we go, hi-hats. These hi-hats that sound not good. Way better, thank God. All right, and these room mics might not be relevant. I can I can like look at the way, I don't even have to. I can look at the waveform. I know it's not relevant. The other thing with the kick is um, it's a sample. So uh, the waveform is gonna be inherently different there too. So we don't have to worry about that so much. So why don't we, we've done just a little bit now. Let's pan our hats to the left or overhead, left, left. Room's gonna say center. We're gonna do, I love stereo room. So we're gonna have to make a fake stereo for that. I will probably use an effects end. Um, let's see what we got. Not so bad. A little phase issues from the toms. That's better. Now I guess this is a good time as any to just clean up, scrape out your toms. Uh, we can probably fast forward this part of the video. Okay, the toms are cleaned up. I think the only thing I really care to do, we're not even gonna look at the EQ of the toms until we're closer to the end of the mix. We're not really gonna look at the EQ of the overheads, um, but we are going to, because uh, I just know it has to happen. We are gonna clean up some harmonics in the overheads. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of stuff to the overheads. It's gonna basically, so far I've used two plugins, which is hysterical, but um, there we go. Cool, sorry, that's everything. I just want overheads. So here's what it sounded like before. Just get rid of all of this stuff. I want a, I like smooth cymbals. I don't know who's out there being like, I like my cymbals to sound like trash. Uh, that's not me. I like them to be silky. So what we're essentially doing is we're taking these harmonic peaks, boom, push them down as they arise. It's fast, quick. You just turn your sharpness up, Adjust your depth quickly. It's usually not a big move. If you want to get all weird, nerdy, oh, I'll make my thing wider, like, sure. But that doesn't really. The most important thing is that they're ducking. Yeah, it's so much better. Cool. Uh, we're going to do the same thing in the rooms. And now we're probably going to, we're going to, this is probably have a same principle, but just different shape. Yeah, it's more focused here. This time we are going to go a little wider. Lower. Oh, the higher up you go, the more it attenuates, just so you know. Yeah, that's fine. Boy, oh boy, I don't love those. But here we go. Let's try to save those effects. Um, we're going to use... What have I been using? Um, I mean, my go-to is Lex Plate. Um, so I guess this is kind of like a go-to video and I might use Lex Plate for a bunch more stuff. So let's make it a, a Lex Plate uh, send. Nah, you know what? We are gonna use Lex Plate, but we're gonna put these in. We're just gonna make that room stereo sounding. Here's how we do that. 
we're going to go up here, add new track. We have to add a stereo track. If it's a mono track, it won't work. We're going to call these fake stereo rooms. Um, and then after that, I can treat everything like normal. We're going to bust this just like how we normally bust a Reno. Um, goodbye. Remove. Cool. All right, now that this is a stereo track, we go into the inserts, we go to room. We're gonna use Lex room instead of Lex plate here. Lex plate will sort of encompass the whole thing. This is about creating an image. All right, let's pull up uh, some meters. And that's all I really need. I just need it to sound kind of like an XY pair. You might be asking yourself like, what's the big deal? Uh, why can't they be mono? I'll just say my mixing style is I'm really fussy about what gets to be in the middle, like directly in the middle sounding like naked with no reflections. For me, that's kick, snare, bass, lead vocal, get to be there. Anything with high mid-range content, like a lot of consistent high mid-range content, first thing that comes to mind, right? Guitars, cymbals, right? Get those out to the sides. Because if you want your diction and your articulation of your vocal to have center stage in most you know, Western music we do, then you need that area to be a little bit more free and clear, in my opinion. The reason the kick and the snare can be there, even though they have high mid-range content, is that they're transient based. So they pop in, they pop out, they get out of the way, you know? And the difference uh, with the bass is that the bass, uh, typically, unless it's like real gritty, uh, doesn't have a ton of high mid-range content. So that's sitting really under where the diction of the vocal would sit in the first place. So there's plenty of room in the center for that as well. Okay, so we just treated our drums. Yeah, and uh, here we go. I, that, I was right, this sounds a little mechanical. So we're just gonna like, do things the easy way. So here we go. Sounds mechanical. Let's low pass. We'll fix that in a GIF. Cool. Now the kick sounds way better and less mechanical. I kind of think that the drums, and I know that they were recorded in small rooms. So remember when I said uh, I was going to use Lex Plate? Well, let's do that now. Let's pull up our sends and we're going to pull up Lex Plate. And we'll keep putting it on all the channels here. Um, we're not probably going to put it on kick. I think the low end gets super weird. Uh, I guess for, I do it for individual, like I do it individually for the close mics because uh, I don't want the kick to be in it. But then for the overheads in the rooms, you can do it right on your groups. So here we go. Let's play it. rip one and room mics, rip one. This is going to be way too reverby. Um, and then we're just going to adjust the fader to taste. So here we go. Solo the drums. Where am I? Lex. There it is. There's my fader. There's my reverb fader. Here we go. Hey, not so bad. I mean, for a quick drum sound, I think that's sounding really good. So if we add some compression now, we should be in good shape. We'll put the bass in there. The rest of these elements are going to fall into place like pretty fast. Okay, let's go to our all drums here. Uh, if people don't understand how I do my drums, the individual channels, what up, funnel down to close mics, overheads, and rooms. Then these all go to all drums. So that's how I think about drums. I think about them in zones, right? This is like transient stuff. This is smoother stuff. And this is like John Bonham stuff. And I mix it up here. Boom, faders. Make the mix you want. Funnily enough, we've moved almost no faders so far, but we're probably about to as we add compression. I'm going to grab the old standby here and... I actually think Nick Cates, my assistant, has a, yeah, this is a preset called Nick. All right, Nick, let's try it out. It's actually pretty good, Nick. So you can see that's compressing, like the reverb's getting out of hand a little bit now, so. So probably a little too compressed. I'm gonna bring the threshold down. It's better. Nick uh, plays really heavy music that would do much better without compression. <laughs> Love it. Smack that snare down. Sounds good. The reason I like that compressor is because it gives that sort of like rounded top end thing that I think is really beneficial for drums in particular. All right, those are drums. Let's hear some bass. Uh, first of all, it's not a good take. Cool. But... I 
I mean, the first thing I see here is that we have compression issues. So um, I'm going to use, I honestly don't even know why I did this in two pieces. I just probably didn't know how to record back then. I'm going to use this cool offline processing mode, direct offline processing. Um, there's a plugin called Opticom, um, and it's like my new favorite for bass. So the reason I'm doing it with direct offline processing, as you can see, it's chugging away here. Um, we're gonna see it in the waveform. Uh, and I want you guys to be able to see the difference between, you know, compressed bass and not, hey, look, dynamic range is now contained. Okay, and literally I'm just gonna do the same thing right here. And like I said, we're running, we're gunning. I know you're like, dude, you were literally not even turning knobs. Like I'm turning some, I'm turning the ones that I need to, damn it. So there's something that I want you to notice in all of this. Uh, remember when we did the kick sample and I was like, oop, right away, we're taking that dynamic range down to 50, right? And now I just did the bass with a pretty heavy handed optical compressor and you saw the waveform change. It was like lots of dynamics. Not so much. Uh, the reason I do that and what those two things have in common is that they are low end focused. So when you're thinking about like frequencies and how we hear things, low frequencies are less directional and we typically like them in, especially in music, we like our low end consistent. You know, it can have vibe and character and cool amp tones and all of that stuff. But low end, I think dynamically fares better when it's in a more like consistent realm. And as we expand up the frequency range, then like higher end stuff, uh, symbols can be way more dynamic. We didn't do any compression aside from some soothing, but that's not even like exactly really compression. So we're not like doing any compression on the overheads and things like that because like we want those to be directional. We want those to flash and disappear. Our low end, we want it to be like happening. Okay, let's listen to the bass and the drums together. Cool, it's way better. All right, let's move on to roughing out some guitars. Looks like we have some tracks we did not use here, so. Goodbye. Okay, so I gotta pick where people are gonna be. Uh, we're gonna go with a real standard, what they call LCR mix here, left, center, right. Um, and I'm gonna do, this is Gus is G and I am J, don't you know it. Let's go hard pan on the close mics and we'll see if we can get a blend there. I'm gonna do something weird and I'm gonna try this, it might not work. I'm gonna take these room uh, reflection mics that I grabbed. I'm gonna pan on the opposite way and we're gonna tuck them down. And that might just like cross mingle the stereo image a little bit, which could potentially be cool. Make sure I bust these right. I did not. Um, these go to guitars. That begs the question, did I bust you? I did, just not the guitars. All right, here we go, guitars. That's annoying as hell. All right, so we have dynamics problems again. Um, this is a little bit of a different situation. So let's pull up one of these guitars and let's have a look. Yeah, that's what I thought. The chuggies are dynamically uh, above where the rest of our guitar signal is. They're probably just gonna be not awesome if we leave it like that. Yeah, I don't like that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the dynamic EQ feature of Pro Q3, and we're gonna find where the chug frequency is. It'll be somewhere around here. Yeah, that's pretty easy. You know what? That's actually steeper. Uh, no, yeah, we can do it this way. Let's see. I basically want that, I'm gonna take this off auto. And I'm gonna set the threshold. I need to make it so that when the guitar is playing on its own, this isn't really doing much, but as we hit like a chug part, it starts kicking in. So we're gonna bring our range way down. What this range does is it basically says like, all right, how low can you go? Uh, limbo style. Whoop. And then, this is our threshold control, and we'll drag this down to increase the amount of basically dynamic EQ or frequency dependent compression, whatever you want to call it right here. And widen this up a little bit. Okay, cool. So that's one thing we fixed. Um, that's gonna happen across the board. So now that we figured that out, boom, alt click it, baby. Um, and I'm curious, I just wanna hear Gus's guitar, or sorry, that was Gus's guitar, this is mine. 
sounds really bad. Uh, <laughs> and it sounds like that's the same problem. So Rough Riders, uh, the room won't need it. Okay. Let's see. And let's have a look at that. This is what I just added. Yeah, as suspected, uh, it's doing the same thing, probably because it was poor mic position. Um, okay, that's fine for now. Uh, those are panned out. Let's get a general level for the guitars. Uh, vocals, goodbye. Um, and here we go. I gotta find some compression overall that's gonna work here. This just doesn't sound good. Um, so here we go. Let's do 1176, fast and bright. We're gonna go really fast uh, attack and really fast release. Let's see. I just... I just want to hold it in place. That's okay. I want to try one more thing. Um, there's one called Pro C from FabFilter. It's really good. It's super visual too. Let's go large here so you guys can see what's going on. That immediately sounds better to my ears. Yep, that's gonna go all around. So Pro C is gonna win this Duke out. Um, and here we go. So that is on all the guitars. We're gonna do this on individual channels as opposed to the group channel. And the reason um, is I just want all of these independently to be more, that's what we're looking for, consistent before I start messing with how I'm gonna combine these. I got some definite frequency things we gotta to fix too. <laughs> So we can see a couple things right away. I'm just gonna clip gain. Gus is louder than me. Can't have that. Makes it easier to balance. I'm looking down here, by the way, in case anyone's wondering what the hell I'm doing. You know, I'm gonna go by the meter to a point, but also there's a perceived volume thing too. So I'm using my ears and my eyes at the same time. This must be like a lead? What the hell is that? I don't know, I'm gonna figure that out later. I'm gonna stick to these bigger passages uh, to get the main mix going. You know what's funny is I think these are labeled wrong, honestly. I'm pretty sure I play this part. Nah, that's Gus. Man, I do not really like these guitars. I've improved, I hope, since then. Um, there's irritations I saw it here. Same type of deal. Harmonics. Oh, that's the old version. Come on. It's a two, baby. Updated UI. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Uh... I need to sense that used to some reverb for sure. A uh, little Lex plate action, but not too much. Yeah, that extra little bit helps. You know what else I might do on these insanely? Um, you guys ever mess with this plugin? The Eddie Kramer old whatever? I probably used this plugin a lot back in that day. Um, here we go. This is a perfect plugin to like, like, just like I said, rough stuff out with. Make sure you're in the green on all these waves plugins. Oh, this is adding some compression too, which is nice, but it's too much right now. 
and they have like these two they basically different like mid-range modes here i'm gonna pick rhythm too i like it better and i'm gonna go hard in the paint with the the mix or with the effects see like that little delay and stuff that's gonna fill it out because they're kind of just like i don't know yeah the guitars were just feeling like piercy and kind of irritating. I probably need to look at some high passing and low passing too in a second. Right there, what I was trying to quickly do was just get rid of the dynamic issues. Man, so many issues with the guitars. The dynamic issues and then get rid of like the harmonic issues, kind of like we did with the cymbals and then make them sound not irritating and boring, thus <laughs> sprinkle in the effects. <laughs> Snare's kind of loud, huh? Now that we've got like more of the mix going, I like want some of that mechanical nature to kick back. And truthfully, I want like even less dynamics. This is what I was talking about, like just like rough it out in the beginning, might as well, cause you're gonna come back probably. Yeah, is that triggering correctly? Might have a threshold issue. Yeah, we gotta get a little higher here. And you know what, screw it. Let's add, let's add some snare reinforcement. Let's not kid ourselves, it's 2020. We know what goes on. Snare sample. Snare Snapple. You guys remember Snapple? Does anyone drink Snapple anymore? I, d I don't, I used to, I couldn't go anywhere without seeing Snapple. Now I don't see Snapple. All right, you go in, you go into close mics, you're gonna get compressed with the rest of them. We're gonna tuck you in, tuck you into the mix. Here we go, let's grab some stuff. Got all kinds of goodies in here. Gonna lean on some stuff that I usually lean on because I'm familiar with what it sounds like um, at the moment. And we're gonna make something sound stereo. You'll see me not use the mono room because uh, you know now how I feel about mono signals. All right. Cool, that's obnoxious, but let's put it in. Oh, uh, let's not forget, right? Boys and girls, what do we do? We check phase. Oh, but in this case we're gonna check it after. You have to do it after the sample if you're gonna do it. And. Yeah, sounds good. Oh yeah, didn't pan the toms yet. That's not good. Give that a little go. <laughs> Bass is all loud, boys. All right, not much time left before I gotta go pick up my son. So we'll see how far we get. Uh, quickly, we'll do the percussion. Yikes, that's just gonna be high pass filter central. Ha, <laughs> like 60 cycle hum or something in there. It's ridiculous. Cool, yeah, I kinda wanna like ever so slightly brighten it. Like that's got that and this has like that. Yeah. More more of you. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um I'm gonna send a little bit of you to Lex plate. You get a car. You you get a plate. Um Yeah, 
just so it sounds like it's in place. And you're gonna get panned. And uh, let's see, which way do we wanna pan you? I think let's let's put it on the other side from the hi hat. The hi hat's pretty cool there, so like. Yeah, sure. It's just a little feature, like not a big deal. Oh my God, let's just put my vocals in quick. I gotta go. <laughs> so I'm professional, like oh, I've been watching this whole video. Now he's really rushing. Uh, here we go. We're gonna use another dumb plugin. Uh, Chris Lord Algae's vocal plugin. Um, pretty good, pretty good. Um, I already know this is going to spank. Let's let's hear me. I, I'm dreading this moment, just so everyone knows. And we will hide my insecurities with more reverb. Okay, and before we start nuking this with spank compression, can we talk about that for a second? Can we talk about like, why, can we not, do we have to call compression like spank and slap? you like, uh, all right, let's look at my vocals. They're going to need EQ, <laughs> for sure. There it is. Okay, we got all this rumble here, which apparently is all that occurred. I recorded this in my old studio, so not surprising. And uh, let's see. And it's just too friggin' sibilant. We're gonna do a really steep high cut. Boomsies. We don't need that. Nope, that is annoying. Listen to me up there. Sorry, better, but there's like some 1K ish garbage. Listen to me up there. Yeah, that area. Listen to me up there. Listen to me up there. All right. All right, what do I got? I got like five, 10 minutes. Can we do this? Fam, can we do this? Can we do the stereo bus? We got a general balance. I think we can. Like Obama, yes we can. Let's just pull up cool stereo bus plugins and use them recklessly. I think that sounds nice. Yeah, boy! Look at how long this scream is. Can we time that? There's absolutely no way screams like that and the ones I did for Defeater like didn't take years off my life. Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go to heaven, first of all. Yeah, right, but I'm gonna go to heaven and then God's just gonna like, he's gonna point to all the times. which just be like, well, this is why you're here now. Cause see, you see these? Remember Germany? Remember, oh, Australia, remember that? Yeah, so that's why I don't go. True, yeah, true, true. 
All right, ready for secret weapon time? Tonal balance control. This is so helpful when we're working on, oh, this one's not working. We'll go to the other one. Uh, when you're trying to rein in some psychoacoustics, uh, real quick, we're gonna go to modern composition, fine. That's what I thought, we're mid-scooped. All right, you're gonna go off to the screen for a second and we are going to correct the scoopage. Uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it dynamically. Here we go, we're gonna use a multi-band uh, compressor to correct the deficiencies in the low mid-range. Uh, we're gonna grab a quick preset and mess with it. So I'm bringing the bass, I'm looking for the crest down. That's where I put my crossover line. Guitars are kinda mid-rangey. We're gonna soothe before this. This is gonna be a very general whole mix soothe. So one way to add like the feeling of more low mid range is to correct any surplus of high mid range. I've been contemplating doing this move on the bass like the whole time. CLA, you're back. Back on bass. No, this is something I don't want stereo. Yeah, I just want you to be like meaner. Man, that just balanced the mix big time. Okay, now we're gonna do just some warming with some EQ. We're still low mid-range deficient, I can tell. There's no way that bass note is in key. Did you hear that, that run? Nope. All right, you know what? I'm calling it. That's we we mixed it. Here's what we do now. Here's what we do now. Years later, we're gonna bounce this. November fifth uh, mix. How exciting is that? That's exciting. Come on, that's exciting, right? Twenty four bit locators bounce. All right, we did it. I am printing the mix. We are exporting now. We have one step left. What you thought? You thought I was gonna develop uh, the world's best proprietary artificial intelligence mastering platform and then not run the mix through it? Like we're gonna go, we're going from zero to hero, baby. We're gonna run this through Master and we're gonna just put it back in the session really quick. We're gonna look at it and we're just gonna be like, damn, that can happen that fast. So let's do that. All right, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna log in. Boom, make an account if you don't have one. It's free, so you should. Well, at least to check it out and see if you like it, which you will. Uh, we're gonna add an album. We're gonna call this project November 5th, 1955. Cool. All right, then we're gonna grab our mix and we're gonna drag it in. We are gonna watch it upload. Um, as you can see, it's uploading now and right after it uploads, it is going to start the mastering process. Uh, waiting to process. Basically what's happening here is um, it's just queuing up. Uh, there we go, it's already done. And now the whole AI engine is doing it. So while this is literally mastering directly behind me, uh, I want you guys, oh shoot, am I supposed to say like and like and subscribe if you want? But also I want you guys to comment and let me know what you think about the process, what parts of this you liked, what parts made sense to you, what would maybe you have done. Um, and I don't know, just want to kind of hear from you guys. 
And comment, I'm commenting to you that I think all of this is awesome, that you, you could have done this mix with this thought process on basically any computer. This computer that we're using here is from 2015, 2016. So it's not even like super new at all. Like almost any laptop would be able to do it and basically every de desktop, and basically every desktop absolutely can do this. And then now, uh, if you don't want to train your psychoacoustics, you want to run and gun mix like this and make really cool creative stuff. I've got you, man, in the background with this whole master business, monster business, because uh, you can just upload to the platform. We're going to handle all your loudness stuff, collaboration stuff, psychoacoustics. It's so fast and so easy and the results rule. And we're going to prove that uh, in a second when we re-import this now basically already mastered, no, not basically, this already mastered version and check it out for yourself. Now think about how much better you would be able to collaborate and revise if mastering wasn't this like dark art reserved by some guy, he's Oz behind the curtain, he takes two weeks to return your email. No, you just make it part of your workflow, your everyday workflow. So that's um, that's it, say my piece, uh, let's listen to this. It's gonna sound probably super sick, and we did it like that. All right, and just like that, we can download. Okay, I'm stoked, I haven't seen this before. Importing into the session, we have to remember to turn off all of our stereo bus stuff because uh, we don't want to basically run it through our stereo bus twice. That's what would happen. Here is our mastered file, our mastered file, and let's check it out. Dude, I think that sounds awesome. I mean, there, are there things that would change still? Yeah, like we spent very little time on this mix, but we went from, I just have stems to reasonably great sounding product that uh, is now totally ready for revisions. Like, let's say you're doing this for a client, right? And now you can give the client the thing and they don't have to be like, oh, what's it gonna be like when it's mastered? You just be like, no, just comment on this. This is, there's no more, smoke and mirrors, there's no more waiting on the thing, waiting on the mastering, just comment on this and we will work on this. Things that would change immediately, vocals are still a little crispy, uh, the hi-hats and stuff are just still a little bit crispy. I thought I might have to do a low pass on the overheads, seems like I do. We'll see if I continue to work on this more, if people are interested enough, maybe I will. I just thought this would be like a crazy fun experiment for us to do, show you guys my mixing style, um, show you some of the tricks. I obviously lean on like if you have a big mixing takeaway here, it's that I lean on correcting harmonic issues and dynamics issues first, then we embellish those things. We do them really quickly. Like if I was taking a little bit more time with this, I never even tried to see what blending the two different guitar sounds would do. We didn't spend a lot of time there and a lot of stuff I just slapped on and I was like, this will be cool, but it's not like, it's not like the most refined thing. So anyway, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go pick up my son. Uh, this was super fun. It took me a little bit longer than I thought, but it's totally worth it. Uh, I hope you stayed t for most of it till the end, maybe. I am Jay Moss. Hope you learned something. Adios.